Good day, um, I'm Jacques Extin, the Chief Operating Officer of the Future Battery Industry, CRC. Now I'll just have a, um, a quick presentation on um, how the FBI CRC um, have basically um, uh, worked towards a research-based strategy for establishing Australia as a leading player in uh, the emerging global battery industry. Um, I think we all know, and this is not news, but it's, we've seen the, the growth in the lithium ion battery industry um, uh, propelled by a combination of, of what we're seeing in, in, in um, electric vehicles, um, various electric storage systems, uh, portable electronics, and so on. And this hockey stick effect that we're seeing will probably only um, get uh, far more intense as we, as we go on in the next decade. Um, we can see here um, just the projections, or, or not the projections, but literally just the, the, the real growth in the past 10 years. Um, and this was only literally, we're only at the cusp of this major change. Um, a link to this naturally is the, all the raw materials that go into um, lithium ion batteries and uh, where Australia is really well positioned to deliver. Also, it's worthwhile to see that, you know, the, the extent to which already, um, and you can see this was um, by 10 March 2020, so earlier this year, um, the number of projects um, just in terms of, of um, renewable um, going up in Australia at the moment, large scale renewable energy projects, most of these um, require uh, battery energy storage systems to make up for the time when the sun is not shining and the wind is not blowing. Um, and therefore, the need for batteries seem to rapidly grow um, in Australia as well. Maybe important to look at, you know, our mission as the Future Battery Industry CRC. Um, we got together to bring, we got, we were basically formed to bring together um, a range of stakeholders that were initially quite fragmented across Australia. And um, we aim to uh, foster the collaboration and collective action of stakeholders in the battery value chain to enable growth in the Australian battery industries by doing three things. By growing the Australian economic activity in the global battery industry, by growing the exports of Australian battery related materials, services and technologies, and by growing battery industry um, jobs with appropriate skills and education. We also aim to do this through prudent industry guided and investment in research and development, evidence based advocacy, and education and training. We went through a process of submitting the bid in 2018. You can see the, 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 some of the key milestones that were achieved in 2018, um, 19 and 20. Um, currently, we've got, a, we've got a pool of funding between um, just over $210 million of cash and in kind. Current uh, participants are um, around 56 at the moment and, and steadily increasing. Um, we um, hope to get to what we would call steady state, meaning basically getting our projects, the bulk of our projects commissioned um, by the end of 2020. Um, <clears throat> you can see there a, um, some of our, our um, uh, sorry, move this, some of our um, uh, participants here. Um, and you can see also that they're across, spread across the value chain. Um, companies there um, on the mining and concentrating side, on battery chemicals, um, battery materials, cell manufacture, uh, battery pack manufacture, recycling and deployment, um, and the various service industries that support them. So um, we were able to get together this, this group and um, we feel that we're well on our way to support a very integrated um, value chain approach. One of the things that, that um, initiated our, uh, you know, or really focused us on, on, on looking at a uh, vertically integrated approach in this TRC was realizing how little of the value chain we're really unlocking by just doing um, uh, the mining and exporting of concentrates. And um, subsequently, um, really looking at what we can do to, to see how we can grow the industry in, in further downstream processing and manufacturing. Um, if we then um, look at um, our activities um, and we see here uh, that 
uh, our capability in Australia. Um, we have a number, of, if we look at across the value chain, we see that we are very strong in mining concentrating. That's no news to anybody. But I think what is important is that we're rapidly growing our output in battery chemicals um, and refining and manufacture, such as um, the production of lithium hydroxide, <clears throat> which is currently happening um, it, with plants in construction or commissioning um, with Tianxi, Albemarle, um, and um, um, Covalent will follow shortly. Um, similarly for nickel sulfate with, um, and cobalt sulfate with, with uh, BHP, um, and a range of companies that are active to uh, put um, uh, to create facilities for man manganese sulfate manufacture, aluminium sulfate manufacture, and um, graphite refining. Um, um, in active materials manufacture, while we've got um, small scale activities, the, uh, we have a significant investment in this project um, through um, to actually invest in active materials production. Um, on the anode side, though, we've also got companies such as Echograph um, developing well towards um, uh, serenized um, and refined graphite. We see in cell manufacture and testing um, <clears throat> maybe a smaller opportunity, although we, we do see that recently yeah, um, with companies such as Energy Renaissance, who um, just announced their um, plans to put on a, a gigafactory in um, in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales that there will be cell manufacturing in Australia um, but we will probably see that targeted towards um, stationary storage rather than, than electric vehicles. Also we do expect um, cell testing for, and, and, and sorry, uh, cell testing and manufacture for um, more bespoke type of technologies for deployment and defense and then mining. Um, we do already have a number of companies that are um, in the area of manufacturing battery packs and modules um, and we've got some testing capability although we again through our CRC invest in further testing capability. Um, battery deployment is currently happening um, uh, quite significantly as uh, everybody would know we in the world we started with the world's largest um, utility scale battery but we're also seeing various large-scale energy storage systems the deployment of electric vehicles, the um, deployment in defense and mining that is that is rapidly progressing. Um, battery recycling, again, we do have activities here and companies such as EnviroStream, which is um, um, an, a subsidiary of, of, um, of Lithium Australia, um, having developed a full integrated process to recover basically over 90% of the materials from, from lithium ion cells. Um, we also see in that middle line a range of um, gauges indicating what we see as the potential for economic growth. And what we can see there is um, that in general, there are significant potential um, across the board and across the value chain, um, probably a bit less with um, cell manufacture. Um, that's just because of the foreseen size relative to the global scale. So. Uh, while we do see um, real opportunities in this space, it's maybe not as big as one would expect, for instance, in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, the Future Battery Industry CRC have got projects across this value chain, and you can see there, and we'll get to those um, a bit later, but the size of investment um, reflected in the size of the bubble of various projects um, that have been um, commissioned in or under, under development um, across the value chain. However, we should note that um, we are not alone in this. We, there are nearly every um, developed country at the moment. They've got some other battery strategy. Some countries are investing heavily. An example is Finland. Finland has got a fifth of the, of the economy of Australia, about the fifth of the population as well. They, all, they do, however, share some um, uh, comparisons with Australia, like, for instance, um, um, they, they are resources rich as well, particularly in things like um, nickel and cobalt, like we are. And um, the difference though is that in Finland, they are investing, you know, close, close to three quarter of a billion dollars um, in, in, in batteries. And we certainly are lagging in terms of our investment in, in this space. It also hasn't been, um, you know, plain sailing all the way. 
um, uh, we definitely have seen you know uh, investment and, and 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 seeing that the plants go up here in Quinana and Western Australia for nickel sulfate production. You can see the photo there in the right hand side, or uh, Tianchi's um, plant there um, on the left hand side. However, it, um, there has been some cost blowouts um, and um, there has been some challenges. Um, one of them being that the lithium sector also in the past year and a half has faced a lot of headwinds in terms of just price pressure. <coughs> um, the CRC commissioned a, a range of, of scene setting projects. Uh, here's an example of one that you can find on a web, website. The governance of battery value chains, uh, talking about the security, sustainability in, of Australia, and Australian policy options. Um, and some of the salient features on the right hand side. Um, due to time constraints, I won't go through all the detail of that, um, but I do invite you to, to, go, to go to our website and, um, and have a read of this. Um, similarly, the next one, which really spoke about um, lithium ion battery cathode manufacture, again a scene setting report um, with um, um, uh, QUT and Hatch and supported by Merowa as well, um, that delivered that initial report to us. Uh, following that, the CSRO um, worked with the FBI CRC um, to develop a state of play of Australian battery industries. Um, this state of play report has also been launched fairly recently. Um, we've got a range of further scene setting projects um, and, and which we will, um, as time progresses, we will deliver via our website. So go to our news and events page on the website and you'll see them eventually. Um, one is the certification and life cycle assessment of Australian battery materials and looking at the drivers and options. Development of uh, trusted supply chains for Australian battery materials and mineral products. Battery reuse, repurposing and recycling and battery supported mine electrification. And these will all be, um, should be either by the end of the year or maybe January next year should all be online. We've got a range of, of projects in our project portfolio which um, uh, we have at various stages of approval. For instance, at the board approved projects as full projects, uh, we've got a national battery testing center that will um, test battery packs and modules at the, at the uh, multiple kilowatt level up to a few hundred kilowatts, um, including testing of, of the Nadium Redox flow batteries. Um, the electrochemical testing of lithium ion battery materials in standard cell formats is really to look at testing in um, button or coin cell formats, um, 18650 pouch and, um, and prismatic formats, and particularly to give feedback to um, the raw material suppliers and the chemical producers around their, uh, the um, attributes, properties of their materials, the um, impurities that are, that are in those materials, and give that feedback for qualification purposes. Um, we've got a, um, a project on super anode materials, which really is about refining graphite um, concentrates um, to, to ultra pure graphite, um, spherinizing that material to, to, uh, to uh, particles of the right particle size distribution and shape, and then siliconizing it to ensure that we've got a high performance super anode material. Uh, we've got a project on future electrolyte systems with the aim to make uh, manufacture um, bespoken niche electrolytes, and this is not the general electrolyte for electric vehicles, but rather for um, applications where um, uh, the batteries would see high temperatures and where there's a, there's a real focus on um, preventing, you know, um, uh, the flammability of, of the electrolyte and, um, and, and also to allow for fast charging through also higher voltage applications and safe operation at higher voltages. We've got a project on microgrid deployment of batteries. Uh, which really looks at deploying these batteries in um, um, both in residential areas as well as um, um, at um, resources operations. And then uh, a project on the environmental certification and life cycle analysis of battery materials. That one actually um, dovetails with one further down, which is the uh, battery material provenance and traceability. Um, the real idea here is to that the life cycle is, um, information is provided in a format that would allow us um, um, easy of certification in, uh, internationally of our materials. Um, and that information is fed into a, an encrypted ledger that uh, provides information to OEMs. 
We've got a range of, of um, um, other um, project proposals that have been approved. The cathode um, active material or cathode precursor and active material production pilot plant, uh, innovative nickel and cobalt extraction technologies looking at uh, really significantly um, reducing the cost of, um, of uh, production of nickel and cobalt sulfate from mine materials and also significantly increase the overall recoveries and yields. We've got um, uh, a project on enhanced lithium extraction refining that deals both with the mineral processing side as well as the refining, the hydrometallurgical refining um, and the pyrometallurgical calcination, but it also deals with brines as well. So it's, it's, it's both hard rock and brines that are, that are covered in that project. Um, and then process legacy that deals with how do we repurpose our wastes um, so that we can physically reduce our waste and then reutilize our waste let's say for um, uh, Portland cement manufacturer, uh, concrete uh, manufacturer, and, um, and also soil amelioration agents and so, and so on. We've got a few proposals currently under development. Vanadium electrolyte production being a very important one. Uh, we do see vanadium redox flow batteries as a key, um, as a key uh, energy storage type for stationary storage in Australia and the production of electrolyte would be important. We've got a number of vanadium um, um, resource companies in Australia that will be producing vanadium pentoxide and it's really um, uh, manufacturing the electrolyte from that pentoxide and looking at the commercial feasibility of that to do that in Australia. Um, the battery material provenance and traceability I've actually mentioned earlier on as it uh, connects with that um, environmental certification project. Um, that project really looks at uh, geochemical fingerprinting as well as um, traceability using blockchain technologies. Um, the project on, 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 on uh, recycling is really strongly focused on green methods of recycling um, so that we um, have got a, a, a sustainable way of recycling our um, batteries in Australia. The Australian battery industry hubs look at what conditions we need to have in place to um, induce foreign direct investment into hubs, uh, production hubs all across Australia. And we see these going up in, in numerous places, for instance, in Quinana here in, in, in Western Australia, close to Perth, but also um, in areas such as Kalgoorlie, in areas such as um, uh, Niau, uh, um, in the Hunter Valley and around Newcastle with um, Energy Renaissance, but also other companies such as 3ME Technologies, um, Mineral Carbonation International, various companies that are related to the broader battery industry that are putting down um, plants of various types um, in th that area. In, in New South Wales as well, um, around the parks um, hub, we've got a number of, of, of resources operations around nickel, cobalt um, and rare earths um, uh, in that area. Uh, and then on battery support and mine electrification is a very important project for us as well. If we want, we need to decarbonize to ensure that we also, our, our lithium and nickel and cobalt and manganese and aluminum and graphite are all produced in sustainable ways and that, they're, that we actually reduce the carbon footprint associated with the um, extraction and refining um, of those uh, battery materials. Um, naturally, it's also beyond battery materials, it's all mines and um, we are already seeing a lot of mine electrification happening in, um, in the gold industry, in the iron ore industry. So this is really a big uh, tsunami really that's in, in development at the moment that's um, with a lot of companies getting onto this uh, battery supported mine electrification bandwagon and seeing, you know, this is a, this is a real key opportunity. Um, without spending too much time on this, I do want to emphasize the nature of our CRC uh, where um, we can see that every, um, every one of our projects really are there by design. Um, it's not a ran random assembly of, of, of projects within programs. The projects are chosen to for highest impact. Um, and we truly have projects that, that we do see um, aids to the growth of industry across the full value chain. Um, and we will then have, we will see we'll have production of cathodes, electrolytes, anodes, electrochemical testing and cell manufacture 
um, and pack testing and so on, um, all happening in Australia. So for us, um, we've got a few key messages that uh, um, what we've realized is that Australia is on the cusp of developing significant capability and capacity um, in industry to move further along the battery value chain. Um, the battery industry though is a, is a multi-stage business. Uh, it's got a very complex supply chain um, and it creates a number of um, it's particular challenges for new entrants. Uh, we hope to facilitate um, the creation of this industry and the linkages in this industry. We also have to realize that Australia is, um, there is a competition in play with Finland and Sweden and the UK and Germany, and just to name um, countries in Europe, uh, where um, battery manufacturing really goes into an unprecedented growth phase, and there is um, the investment to match that. Um, on the policy setting side, uh, um, for the growth of the battery industries in Australia, we see that Australia is not really as integrated or strategic about it at the moment as other countries. And we need to um, change the way we approach um, the industry as a whole. Um, we have to work and be more proactive to create frameworks um, across all the market segments. There is also much to do um, in the research development space to demonstrate the global battery makers our technical capability here in Australia and the value of Australian provenance and our um, environmental, uh, responsible environmental processing here um, and our confirmation to good business practices, ethical sourcing um, and uh, uh, good labor practices. Um, we also do believe that aspects such as safety um, and health and the way that we care for our workers do, uh, do make a difference um, in terms of uh, what we can claim around the production of our raw materials, but not only raw materials, but also battery chemicals, battery materials, and hopefully cells and battery packs. Um, thank you very much.